everybody, I'm Kid Catholic. You guys are the Saints in Training, and this is Season 4, Episode 5, and today's topic is sacramentals. So, let's get into it. So, sacramentals are very different from sacraments. Sacramentals are objects that the church has given to us for blessings. However, they are considered blessings, and it gets a little bit dicey as to whether sacramentals are only inanimate objects as to whether they are blessings. But the Baltimore Catechism definition of a sacramental is, sacramentals are holy things or actions of which the church makes use to obtain for us from God through her intercession, spiritual and temporal favors. So as that definition could kind of show it is a little bit dicey as to whether sacramentals are only inanimate objects like a scapular, a rosary, etc., or whether they are blessings as well, like a priest blessing. So for this video, I'm just really going to focus on the object side of it, like scapulars, rosaries, and I might do a whole nother video on blessings. But sacramentals are very different from sacraments because a sacrament is something that jesus instituted jesus instituted the sacraments whereas sacramentals are something that the church instituted the church instituted sacramentals now sacramentals do not give us the same kind of graces that sacraments do sacraments consist of baptism confirmation uh first communion um uh confession holy orders, etc. Those are sacraments, whereas sacramentals are rosaries, scapulars, and so sacramentals can give us temporal favors, like the Baltimore Catechism said, but they do not give us the same kind of graces that sacraments do, because sacraments were, again, instituted by Jesus, whereas sacramentals were instituted by the church. Sacramentals, I always kind of consider as little, little boosts from God, little help on the way to heaven. Sacramentals can help us on the way to heaven. Not as much as sacraments can, but they can, little, little helpings that God gave to us to help us get to heaven. They can give us temporal favors. They can give us blessings. They can make us feel safe. Mary, Mary herself, it gave a sacramental to us. She gave us the rosary, right? She asked that we pray it every day. She gave it to St. Dominic Savio, and we're not going to get much into that right now, but uh, Mary gave us the rosary, and Mary also gave us scapulars. Mary is responsible for some major sacramentals, and so sacramentals, even though they're not as necessarily important uh, is the word I would use as sacraments, they are still very important because they make, I don't know about you guys, but they make me feel safe anytime I look at my rosary or anytime I know that I'm wearing my scapular, I feel a lot safer than I do without it. There are many blessings that sacramentals give us. The Baltimore Catechism lists um, a few of the, bl the chief blessings that uh, sacramentals can give us. Uh, it says actual graces, the forgiveness of venial sins, the remission of temporal punishment, which is purgatory, health of body and material blessings, protection from evil spirits. And so all of that is some pretty big benefits. Just like I said, it's kind of little, li little helps that God gives us. And scapulars and rosaries aren't the only sacramentals. There's holy water, there's candles, there's at blessed ashes, there's blessed palms. There are all kinds of these sacramentals and you can go back and watch how, what I read from the Baltimore Catechism. Those blessings are extremely helpful and I'm going to go through one by one in each blessing and explain to you how helpful they can be for our daily lives, whether you're a kid or an adult. The first help that sacramentals can give us that is listed is actual graces. Now, actual grace and sanctifying grace do get confused sometimes, but sanctifying grace is the type of grace that we receive from a sacrament, like baptism, confirmation, first communion, confession, etc. Whereas, actual grace is stuff that we can receive from sacramentals. And the Baltimore Catechism even defines actual grace as supernatural help from God. It literally describes it as help from God. And so actual grace gives us that help that is needed to get from heaven. And actual grace is something that we can contain from a sacramental. The forgiveness of venial sins. Now this one is kind of crazy. You guys, if you don't know, there are two types of sins, mortal and venial sins. Mortal sins is kind of like the really, really bad kind of sin. And venial sins are the still bad but less 
bad type of sins. And so something that sacramentals can do is they can forgive us venial sins, like venial sins. We don't need to go to confession to have of venial sins removed from our soul. We can have perfect contrition and pray through a sacramental because obviously we don't worship objects, we worship God. But um, sacramentals can remove those venial sins and that is something that is actually crazy and it's actually crazy that a scapular or that a rosary can do that. Next is the remission of temporal punishment. Now it, what this means is purgatory. Now I've done an episode on purgatory in the past, the link to that episode will be in the description, but basically to sum it up, purgatory is where we have our sins washed away before we enter heaven. Purgatory is not a place of judgment. It is not where God decides whether we go to heaven or hell. Purgatory is when we're in purgatory, we know that we are on our way to heaven, but we still have to incur some temporary punishment for the sins that we did commit while we were on earth. So they can not remove that time of temporal punishment, but they can lessen it. They can lessen our time in purgatory, which is absolutely crazy that sacramentals have the power to do something outside of this earth. And it's actually crazy to think that. It's so crazy that I think it deserves a mind blow. Health of body and material blessings. This one is pretty self-explanatory. It, it, it helps us with things on earth. It helps us physically. It helps our body. It helps us uh, with earthly things. Whereas the one before it helps with removing temporal punishment, which is something outside this earth. Sacramentals have the power to help us, um, to help us physically. Have, have you ever seen somebody bring maybe a rosary to somebody who's in the hospital? Like these things can help us, especially holy water. I think holy water is a great one. Holy water can help us heal not only internally, but physically as well. And it's absolutely crazy that sacramentals have the power to do something beyond this earth, spiritually, and on this earth and physically. And it's actually insane. Protection from evil spirits is the last chief benefit that uh, sacramentals can give us. And um, this protection from evil spirits is very important throughout our daily lives because we all get attacked by evil spirits little times daily that we may not even notice. Have you ever been tempted to do something that you knew was a sin and you knew was wrong, but you were just so tempted that you did it anyway? It was an evil spirit that was tempting you. You see, it is, it is, it's not God who leads us into temptation. It is, it is those spirits. It is, it is the devil that leads us into temptations like that. And we need to work to resist it. And what sacramentals can do is they can protect us from that. Does this mean that if you're carrying your rosary in your pocket, that you are never going to have another temptation as long as it's in your pocket? No, no, that's not what it means, but it will help. It will help protect you from evil spirits. And maybe it's not even attacking you uh, through, th through, through temptations, but it is attacking you in other ways. Whatever way it is attacking you, sacramentals can be very helpful to protect you from those things. And we need to use sacramentals daily. What I like to do is, I've been doing it for a few months now. I carry a rosary in my pocket wherever I go. It helps me feel safe. It helps me know that what Mary gave to us is right there in my pocket. And I think that just carrying around a sacramental with you daily can help you, help you interna internally, help you physically, and can give you all of these chief benefits that the Baltimore Catechism tells us. And so it is very much important that we have sacramentals and that we use these sacramentals for the chief benefits. Because sacramentals are not just there to look pretty. They're not just there for decoration. They actually do things. They actually benefit us in many ways, like the Baltimore Catechism says. We need to use sacramentals daily because at the end of the day, the ultimate goal is to get to heaven. And like I said at the beginning of this video, sacramentals help our little helpings given from God to help us get to heaven. They're little stepping stones across the river to help us get to heaven. And we, we can't just sit there and look at it. It's, it's not for decorate. We need to use sacramentals for the chief benefits that they can give us. So now that the topic is done, do you guys know what it's time for now? 
It's time for the Saint of the Week. Back at the Saint Sofa, and today's Saint of the Week is Saint Dominic Savio. So let's get into it. So obviously, you guys know the reason as to why Saint Dominic Savio is today's Saint of the Week. Like I mentioned earlier in this video, uh, Mary did give the rosary to him. However, it is said that Mary gave the rosary to him. It is not official. It has not been confirmed that Mary what gave Dominic Savio the rosary, but it's it's uh, likely that it was Dominic Savio who Mary gave the rosary to. But St. Dominic Savio has a pretty incredible life, especially for you kids out there who are watching this. You guys can especially re relate to St. Dominic Savio because he was a child when he was a child saint. And, okay, and so growing up, he went to daily ma mass, okay, and when he was seven, he asked to receive his first communion. And on the day of his first communion, when he was seven years old, he wrote promises. The promises consisted of this. I will go to confession often, and I will go as frequently to Holy Communion as my confessor allows. I wish to sanctify the Sundays and festivals in a spe special manner. My friend shall be Jesus and Mary, death rather than sin. <laughs> he wrote all this when he was seven years old. And I know for some of you watching me, some of you who are watching me are seven years old or around that age. And isn't that crazy? C could you imagine yourself doing that, writing this on the day of your first communion? It'd be, it'd be pretty hard. I'm not sure I could even make those promises. And he was using such big words. I didn't know those words when I was seven. I didn't know those words until a few months ago. Sanctify, I didn't know what that meant. And so it is absolutely crazy. He was personally introduced to St. John Bosco and he actually studied to be a priest with St. John Bosco. St. John Bosco was obviously already a priest at this time and St. Dominic Savio was still young but Dominic when when he met St. John Bosco he told him that he wanted to be a priest and he then studied with St. John Bosco to be a priest. He worked very very hard to become a priest however sadly his health was failing majorly and the doctor said that he should go home and rest and recover and he predicted that he would die very soon but he didn't care as it says in his promise death rather than sin okay this is so crazy guys he basically predicted that he was going to die can you imagine that he died at age 14 guys he was one of the most holy kids out of all the kid saints out of all the kid saints and so, adults, you guys can relate to his holiness. But I think especially you kids who are watching this, you guys can especially relate to him because he was a kid just like you. He went through the same kid struggles that you guys do, that I do. He was a kid just like me, just like you. He went through those same struggles, and yet he still remained faithful to God. He still went to daily Mass. He still went to confession often and received Holy Communion often, and he wrote all those promises when he was seven years old. Psh, that is absolutely insane. We need to work to imitate his holiness and his ability to remain brave even though he knows tragedy is about to hit him and his family he still remains brave and he still remains strong and he still remains close to christ no matter what what circumstances occurs so thank you guys so much for watching please like the video please click the red subscribe button down below and the bell next to it that way you get notified when i come out with a new video also guys today's topic was viewer suggested suggested so go down there in the comments and suggest a topic or a saint suggestion and i will try to get to it also don't forget at my twi my social medias twitter facebook instagram the link to all three of those will be in the description and in the comments also don't forget to check out my website kid-catholic.com on there you can contact me you can find all of my videos and there's so many cool things you can do at kid-catholic.com. The link to that will be in the description and in the comments as well. That was Season 4, Episode 5. I'll see you guys next week. And hi, Brielle!